At the start of 2021, Yoko Taro and Yosuke Saito talked about projects they were working on during a live stream. Taro had an idea he really wanted to do, but Saito was really against the idea. And Taro even said he spent an hour explaining this project to Saito, which is unusually long when presenting a project. They then went out for wine and yakiniku, which is grilled meat, and Saito finally accepted the project. Even after the acceptance, Saito still regretted the project and wished Taro would just work on it on his own. Taro claimed the game is very unsettling. This event actually happened a year before the stream itself, so it's unknown whether or not Voice of Cards is this project, or if it's a second project that they were talking about that they were both excited to work on together. But either way, Voice of Cards recently came out with a demo, and I must say it actually feels a lot better than what I expected. To be honest, I'm not a fan of card games. I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh when I was little, but I lost interest before all of those synchro summons became a thing. But I really love JRPGs, and I grew up playing games like Final Fantasy VII. Plus, Voice of Cards' introduction, it kind of felt a lot like Final Fantasy I when you were speaking to the king and going off on your adventure. The demo takes place before the events of the main game, and it is being used kind of like a prologue for the game. The queen tells your party that you must find a royal object and it was recently stolen. Then you travel to a nearby town, gather information, and follow those clues to find the thief. The biggest thing this game has going on is its visuals. The game is presented as if it were a tabletop RPG with a single narrator reading out the story. This adds some charm to the game, but I was feeling a little confused when people were talking because it's all narrated by the same person so I kind of got confused on who was talking at some points. The combat is turn-based and features some mechanics similar to traditional card games. Everybody has an attack and defense value seen on their card. To deal the most damage, you need to attack enemies with defense values lower than your attack value. Several attacks require gems and are typically followed by a dice roll to determine damage or if the target will receive other status effects. Plus you can use magic attacks to abuse enemy elemental weaknesses. To be honest, I really enjoyed the combat in this game. One thing I was pretty cautious of about the game during its initial announcement was the chance that there would be multiplayer and possible pay to win mechanics. Kind of like Hearthstone in their card packs. Thankfully it looks like this game is completely single player. It does say that there is multiplayer in the title screen, but clicking on it actually leads you to a local multiplayer game mode. It's based on a card game that you can play within the main story, and to be honest, I really enjoyed it. Even though it's against AI where I kind of got cucked during my second game, I at least was able to make it up and have a great comeback during my third game where I actually took control of another character and I ended with a score of 69, which that was pretty nice. Overall, I'm really looking forward to playing the final release. Even though Yoko Taro confirmed that this has nothing to do with the Drakengard or Nier universe, I'm still very excited to see where this story goes. It kind of makes me wonder if this is going to get very dark and twisted, kind of like in Drakengard 1 where all of those watchers and the babies came up and started eating people. love that ending though. I don't know if I want to make more videos covering voice of cards. I figured I'd make this video because it is from the same team of Drakengard and Nier, but if you are interested let me know in the comments. Anyways, I hope to see you soon and I'm still working on that video about Kaim, Red Eye, and Legion. You know, the video I teased a couple days ago.